Okay, in this lesson, Unit 1, uh, Worksheet 2, we're going to find out, we're going to try to fill up your classroom with tennis balls. Okay, this is Analyzing Numerical Data, AMDM. Let's get started. This is your worksheet. Question number one. Consider the situation of determining the number of tennis balls needed to fill your classroom. I want you to estimate a lower bound and an upper bound. Think about your estimation. Do you think it's too big or too small? Why? Okay. Now, quite often you're going to need to pause and fill out your worksheet. Please do that anytime you feel you need to. And by the way, when we go on to example one, you need to be, do, uh, you need to be doing that on notebook paper. So get out some notebook paper too, okay? Example one, how many basketballs will fit into the box? I have a box with a volume of 24 cubic feet, and I'm putting basketballs that have a volume of 463 cubic inches into the box. Okay, what are we going to do? What's the first thing we need to do? We kind of have a problem. The volumes are not in the same units. Okay, so that means we have to convert. Will we convert the inches into feet? Or the feet into inches. I always find take the the feet and turn them into inches. Okay, so how many inches are in a cubic foot? Well, a cubic foot would be 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches, or we're going to raise 12 to the third power. Or notice that we now have 1,726 cubic inches. Okay. That's in one cubic foot. How many are in 24? Simple. You multiply 24 by the 1,728, and you get, look at this, 41,472 uh, cubic inches. Whoa. Okay. A lot bigger box than we thought, huh? Okay, let's go on. Okay, new problem. It's still the same old problem. We now have a box that has a volume of 41,472 cubic inches, and we're putting those basketballs in, and basketball has 463 cubic inches. What are we going to do? We're just simply going to divide, and it looks like, hmm, I rounded it, but let's round it off a little bit more. We are going to get 90 balls in there. Okay. Now, let's think about this. Is this a good estimate? Well, let's look at this diagram. Isn't there a lot of space in that box that's not being taken up by basketballs? Look at it. Wasted space, right? Hmm. How should we deal with the wasted space around the basketball? Okay. Copy this down. I'm going on to the next slide. Okay. Maybe we should find the volume of the smallest box a basketball can fit into and see how many of those smaller boxes can fit into our big box. Okay. So, see what we got here? A little, you know, a box around the basketball. Well, <clears throat> let's see, to find the volume of a box, the volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. Okay. And the Diameter of a basketball is 9.55 uh, inches. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to basically take it to the third power. And mm, let's keep rounding it a little bit more. And there we have 871. What are we going to do? We're going to go back to our 41,472 cubic inches and divide it now by 871 cubic inches and oh that thing rounds to 48. Hmm. Remember our first estimate was 90. Whoa we definitely have a lower and an upper bound. How good of an estimation are these two things? <clears throat> well let's look at a, a real example of balls in a box. 
Notice that they don't, you can't just smush them down in there like they were cotton balls. Nor are they in there like stack one on top of the other very neatly. They're kind of crammed in. There's less space wasted on this diagram, isn't there? Okay, so we know our estimation is, is good and we know it's going to be between the two of them. But think about where it might actually be. Okay. Are you ready to go back to the worksheet? We're on problem two. Let's investigate and make a better estimation. Well, when I originally gave you the problem, <clears throat> I didn't even tell you how big the classroom was. So how could you figure out how many balls could go into it? That's kind of stupid. So I've given you 40 by 30 by eight feet high. All right, here's a question from geometry. What is the shape of a tennis ball? What's the geometry word for that? Do you remember? Sphere. What are the dimensions of a tennis ball? In this class, you're going to be going back and or going out on the internet and finding things like this out. I did it for you. Okay. Again, what is the formula you're going to use? You're going to be going to the internet and finding these things out. All right. Now, as I look at this, what do I do? Write, you, write everything you do down in this class. All right. Don't say I did it in my calculator. Here's the answer. No, no. You've got to show all your work. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's my formula. What do I know? Well, I knew the diameter was somewhere between 2.57 and 2.70. I just decided to go with 2.6. Okay. But I don't need the diameter. I need the radius. And I'm going to cut that in half. Okay. Plug it all into your formula. All right. Notice that the radius is raised to the third power. That's what I get for the volume of one tennis ball. Now, as you work this problem, think about what we did in the example and how you're going to have to come up with a good estimate of what that volume is going to take up on your tennis balls as you do this problem. OK. All right. This slideshow is basically over. There is a part two. And I'll see you on that one. No, I won't see you. But you'll listen to me. Bye. I forgot. We rounded it. It's okay. We're all good. We'll say bye again.